Singapore's health tech agency has signed deals with leading tech firms like OpenAI and Google to get AI training and access to technology. The move aims to boost the use of AI in the healthcare sector. It comes as Health Minister Ong Yi Kang outlined a future where healthcare is powered by AI, such as helping doctors predict how likely someone is to develop certain medical conditions years in advance. This will be the next bound of Healthier SG. Leveraging health records, evidence-based clinical risk scoring, and AI's predictive powers to support preventive care and social prescribing. While we harness the power of AI, we will continue to maintain the human touch through our family doctors, guiding and empowering residents to take charge of health outcomes before illnesses strikes. Mr. Ong was speaking at the inaugural AI Accelerate Conference organized by National Health Tech Agency, Synapse. The event aims to bring the public healthcare and tech communities together to boost talent and capabilities of the healthcare sector. At the conference, the agency also spotlights the various uses of AI in local medical institutions. Nicholas Ng takes us through two of them. Yeah, how did it happen? If you've ended up in the emergency department because of a bad fall, doctors might use an x-ray to see if you've suffered a fracture. Right, so unfortunately there's a fracture. Such doctors don't specialize in reading x-rays, which is why they rely on radiologists for a diagnosis, especially for fractures that are hard to spot. Soon, they might use an AI model that works as a second, keener and faster pair of eyes when spotting fractures. It will be the first time such technology has been rolled out in the a &E. So in the a and &E, time is of the essence. We need to prioritise treatment for patients who need urgent treatment and safely discharge those who don't in a timely manner. Stakes are naturally higher in the a and &E. This innovation is part of AIM-SG, a programme that aims to bring AI to doctors. It will soon be expanded to reading x-rays for signs of tuberculosis. The doctors have been very keen to adopt radiology AI in their practice. The AMSG platform helps to smoothen the IT processes so that our doctors can focus on integrating the AI models into their clinical workflows. This other team is training a system that can do part of a test for sarcopenia, which is the age-related loss of muscle strength. We need screening tools to pick up this condition so that it can be detected, recognised and appropriately treated before patients start to decline. They are training the model to recognise when someone is moving correctly and when they are not, and even to grade overall performance. If they can get the technology precise and accurate enough, more people can conduct the test and more can be tested. If you want to roll out a mass screening tool, you can imagine that it's not only the hospitals that will use it, it will be GP clinics, polyclinics. It could be healthy ageing centres, um, active ageing centres, whereby the staff there could be volunteers, they could be fairly untrained. For Synapse, backing AI projects is a way to help healthcare providers be more effective. The agency has worked on 90 AI models over the last few years, though support comes with caution. It's quite clear that you know, there are a lot of uh, products and a lot of companies doing AI today. So what we don't want to do is to chase what is shiny and what is like, interesting and then have a consequence of implementing them. But we really want to start from the problem, to solve the problem, and then how do we use AI and other technologies and techniques to solve them. He adds that he's not concerned about AI replacing humans in healthcare. That's as the human touch is irreplaceable.